so when I surveyed the top two answers, now I sound like a family feud. Top two answers <laughs> on the board uh, were like a, a streamlined, you know, membership where it's like maybe once a week or maybe once a month, a piece of content or a newsletter. Like those far and away were the most desirable that people wanted. And a traditional membership was so far down the list with, you know, with all of the content uploads and the, the community and all the other things. James Schramko here. Welcome back to my podcast. This is episode 1002. Today we're chatting with Ryan Lee. It's good to have you on this show, Ryan. It's been well overdue. Yeah. I mean, I didn't crack the top thousand. So <laughs> I think yeah, I, I have to up my game. To, um, in <laughs> fairness, though, I was really just serving my apprenticeship. Like the podcast is really starting now. I'm going pro. Yeah. Right. I'm going to well, do this properly. You got, you got to work up to me, James. I mean, I'm not coming in at number five or even number 800. I mean, if I'm not, he's a thousand in. So uh, I am. That's, uh, that's what it said in your rider. Like, let me know when you crack a thousand and, and you might be ready for me. And I yeah. like purple jelly beans, not yeah. the red ones. Well, exactly. I need to like, get one of these proper mic things. That's super oh, pro. Yeah. Oh, I, I just got it like three weeks ago. My buddy Todd Herman said, Ryan, you got to get like one of these things. Cause I'm always like moving around and stuff. Of course I keep the wire in front of me, but uh, yeah, this is, this is no joke. This thing's like 80 bucks. James, <laughs> if I'm, if I'm coming on episode thousand, I'm bringing the a game and Def Leppard shirt. Forget it. You know, well, of course you're known on. for, for being an eighties aficionado. It's, it's dear to my heart because I was a kid in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, so a, a lot of your marketing uh, resonates with me because you bring back memories. You've, we're in this generation where we got to experience life pre mobile phone, pre, mm -hmm. you know, very early stages of computer. In some regards, I think really the interesting discussion for us is some of that journey. You're a veteran in the online space. Just to, for my start to this story, in 2008, I boarded an airplane. I went across to Yannick Silva's Underground 4 event. That's where I met you. I heard about you at that event. Pretty yeah. sure you were a speaker. If not, you had speaker celebrity status. I know I got your book. You were yeah. a, a fitness membership expert. It really opened my eyes to the potential of where I could go with that because at that time, Ryan, I had a job. I was still mm -hmm. a general manager in a Mercedes-Benz dealership. Yeah. Desperately trying to bust out of that with my own online business, but I wasn't quite sure where I could take it. I, at the time that I went to that event, I was probably making $150,000 a year online and hoping to bust through. I managed to do it a little bit after that event, a whole separate story, but that is when I started the Ryan Lee timeline and you had already been deep in memberships. So I think you'd partnered with another oh, yeah. guy. I'd followed your online content and – yeah. Now, this is what's really piqued my interest and a large part is why you're here. You've come back on my radar. It's like you went off into food land for a while. I did. And now you're back in the subscription, membership, uh, really interesting topics to me sort of area. Can mm -hmm. you sort of tell me what happened? You know, it's from <laughs> pre-2008, clearly you were a fitness pro and pioneered that whole membership stuff and then yeah. – you went on a journey and now you're back in, in this wheelhouse. I'd love to know what's going on. Yeah. I, so I started even – so 2008, man, I was already 10 years in. Yeah, so I that's started, like, it's crazy. That's crazy talk. I, yeah, yeah, it, it's, I know. So I started my first website in 98 and then I was just creating lots of content and I made it a subscription site, a, a true membership site in 2001. I'll tell the story. I'll, I'll give the one-minute version of it. I was work at that time. I was working full time as a gym teacher, a gym uh, and phys ed uh, and a health teacher in the Bronx in New York. And I was driving to the school, and I I said tonight when I get home from school, I am going to make this a paid membership site. I'm going to take all this content, and it was already. I was just gonna, I just had to turn it on. I couldn't wait, and it was I was driving to school, and it was a perfect day outside. Sun was shining in September, and I I'm listening to sports radio going there, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait to get home. And then all of a sudden, the radio. We have breaking news. A plane just hit the World Trade Center. So, because I was, I worked in New York City and we were overlooking the water. So we could see the Twin Towers from, and it was like the whole world stopped. Everything was crazy, but it was just so strange that all this was like happening right at that time. Uh, just to put into context, too, like how long ago this was. Mm. So I remember driving to work that morning when I heard the news, what? like on the radio. I was like 
driving yeah. up to the dealership in Sydney. I'm talking suit, tie, company car. Like it was a different different world for me back then. Different lifetime. Yeah. I mean, mm. I would, and I had to, I like ran down the street to the police station. Like, what do we do with all the students? Do we let them out? Like, it was just crazy. But uh, <laughs> obviously, I couldn't launch that day. But I had, at that time, I'd already been for a few years trying to build, you know, revenue. And, and it was with, before subscription. As you know, if you don't have a subscription or some type of, you know, I guess an old school word, some people still use it as continuity income. Mm-hmm. You just kind of go day by day, right? So I would have a day, and I was selling a lot of physical products. I was selling medicine balls, resistance bands, all drop shipping. But but I would sell. This is gonna this is gonna age us a little bit. I was selling VHS <laughs> tapes, um, <laughs> and I would go to the post office during my breaks with like garbage fill, garbage bags filled. But it was you know some one day I would do two hundred dollars in sales. The next day I would do five hundred. The next day I would do thousand. The next day I would do nothing. So the minute I turned it on to subscription, everything changed. It's like, ah. and I don't take credit. I learned it from, there was a guy, he's still around that I've become friendly with him. This guy, Terry Dean. I bought one of his products. It was called like maybe membership site. And he was one of the first, but I was the first to do it for strength and conditioning. Uh, definitely. Cause I was the first one. I, they actually created a category in ClickBank for me. I was the first one in, in, in <laughs> sports training. And that was kind of the beginning of the journey. And I did that for years. And I was just in strength and conditioning and personal training. And that's all I did for years and years and years until I spoke at Yonex event, but not that one. I spoke at a second one and taught membership sites. And I was, after the talk, people rushed the stage. Like I was, you know, Hey, Def Leppard, like I was like John Bon Jovi, like, Oh my God, you got to teach us. And that went on my, that took me on this journey of like teaching membership sites. And I became known as like the membership site guy. Yeah. I kind of hit my peak at like with that stuff in like 2010. Uh, maybe eight. And then I started, uh, I launched a supplement company, which did really well. And we hit pretty quickly because I had such a a hold on the fitness industry. I had all of these guys who became well-known health and fitness marketers, like Mike Geary and Joel Marion and Vince Domani. Like I was the back end for all them. So we, we got pretty quickly up to like seven figures a month in sales. So that started to take a lot of my focus. And I started doing I was still playing with membership sites and I'd launch one and I would try different things. And I probably launched a dozen in different health and fitness industries. And then as it, it's like, God, it's like one of these movies where you kind of hit the peak and then, <laughs> you know, except you. Is it because you, of you competition? See- Is it because people came into the market or you got bored with it? Like but th- this it- is, you know, this is the most interesting thing to me. This is why we need to have, shows like this episodes yeah. like this where we teach the history because mm-hmm. you know that some of some of our clients weren't actually born <laughs> in 2000 right that's pretty mind-blowing oh, yeah. and the second yeah. part is there'll be a membership expert you know last year or the year before or next year saying this is a brand new thing oh, and, and it's like people yeah. need to know the history of this the pedigree the, the where it all came from it's, <laughs> if you want to know yeah. the future it's really important to understand the history and i'm so glad we're getting to share this yeah no i i and if i can give people some learning lessons so so yeah here's what happened here it was outside factors but a, a lot of it was self-sabotage um it's the journey a lot of entrepreneurs take if you're in the game long enough you go through the ups and downs Ex- the exception are the people who are super, super focused and determined. Like if I look at someone like you who, and we were chatting uh, through email and stuff, you said, hey, I've been doing this like since 2009 and I've watched you since the beginning and you've always been like so focused and determined and steady and like your blinders on and that's why you're successful. My, my two most successful students, one guy is Jeff Cavalier. We, he has a thing called Athlean X and he has like, 13 million followers on YouTube and fitness. He's the number one guy. Wow. And I remember when he he sat with me for a day, spent $5,000, and we kind of worked through this whole thing. And he was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a YouTube video. And I'm just, that's all I'm going to do. And he hasn't stopped doing it for a decade. Another one is Mike Geary, who's like, I'm going to be the email health guy and offers and affiliate offers and pay traffic. And that's all he's done. And he hasn't taught how to make money. Jeff hasn't taught how to make money. They just stayed focused. If I would have probably just stayed focused in strength and conditioning, I wouldn't have veered off. I just would have, I would have kept my head down, my mouth shut, and just kept doing it. But what happens is you start drinking your own Kool-Aid. Hey, you know, enough people start telling you how great you are. Oh my, and I had the success, I had so much success, you know, from my 20s through my 30s. I'm going to the parties, 
everyone wants to get drunk with me. Let's go to the clubs. It was just, I became, I started to think I could do no wrong. And I was doing stupid deals. I was making things way too complex. I was getting away from my core strength. I started a print magazine. I got a big office space. I hired staff. I was doing things that I should have been doing. What the hell do I know about running a magazine? And it was a, it was a monthly subscription, which I'm an idiot because it takes like eight. I didn't realize it takes so long to go to printer. So I'd have people yeah. build the second month and they didn't even get the first issue yet. So after two months, I'm like, and I had a lot of subscribers. I canceled it. I'm like, this is a disaster. And then the entrepreneurial ADD kicks in and you start, oh, I could just, you know, if I know if I could do this then I could launch another company. And at one point, I think I had like 12 different corporations <laughs> and it was, it was insane and it caused stress. I started eating poorly. It affected my health. I took my eye off the boat with the supplement company and our, our number two affiliate, we were affiliate driven business. He started a feeding company and kicked our butt like just, and he ended up selling the company for a hundred million dollars. So that oh. felt good. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. We closed a few years later. He so we he sold for a hundred million. So that was a uh, and that was my mentee. Uh, so that was good. That was a that was a fun day. Um, Most people but, say, "Oh, I love it when my students are more successful than I am." It's, you know, it's a hat I, tip saying I'm a great I coach. I do, I do, absolutely. But like it's still Jeff a slap in Mike, the face, isn't it? It's a slap in the face when they when I won't get into it when they screw you. When they yeah. do something and then and then they say things behind your back to steal business. Like if yeah, you're gonna play that's the game. That's unethical, isn't it? If you wanna play it and play it fair, cool. May the yeah. best marketer win. Absolutely. And I'm happy for you. But when you when I do things for you and you screw me, like that that's not cool. But anyway, so between my health and I gained like 40, 50 pounds. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. It was affecting my relationships with my kids, like everything. And I just like kind of walked away from it. I still had my toe in it. I would do a thing here and there, but I was never as visible. I didn't speak at any events for like seven, eight years. I stopped pitching from the stage. I would do an event and then I wouldn't do it for two, three years. And then I would do another one and just kind of starting, stopping. And then about five years ago, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start another health company. And I started the company called Rewind, which started off as bars, transitioned to greens. Um, I just sold that about two, three months ago. So now for the first time in years, I'm like, I'm free. Right. Like I'm, I just, maybe it's a midlife crisis. I just turned 50 and I turned 50 like six months ago. My, one, my oldest kids in college, second year in college, my three other kids are all teenagers. Like life is changing. I'm like, I had a nice exit. What am I going to do now? So now I'm kind of going back to like subscriptions, maybe start to teach marketing again. Um, that's why you see me being more visible. Well, that's what I, I've seen. Um, you, I've seen your fresh website. Your branding is fun. Your yeah. emails are playful and yeah. insightful, but they also tell the story of a simpler business model, you know, do, doing mm -hmm. business in a tracksuit pants. You shared yep. an email recently with a screenshot of your order from Amazon for your actual tracksuit pants. I believe you're a little yeah. more casual tonight. Well, uh, I, it, but I'm wearing, oh, you can't see, I got the, I'm wearing my sweatpants. There you go. I am so, wearing them tonight. So, um, uh, you know, I'm sitting here in board shorts and bare feet, but usual attire. I never, went, I never went for the office. I never did the big office. So I actually said to myself, no. when I left the Mercedes dealership, I don't want staff. I don't want stock. I don't want a physical premises. I, I maintain the no physical premises. I've maintained the no stock. I mean, I have a couple of DVDs. You know, I was a little more progressive <laughs> than you. <laughs> Next generation, you know, DVDs, and then MP3 sticks, but. I, and I do have a team which are amazing and, and they're an essential part of the leverage that creates the lifestyle that I have. But I think you kind of glossed over the whole like a rewind thing. It obviously sounds like yeah. it looked from an outsider's perspective. I was a, I was aware of that. I think I was begging you to send some to Australia. Um, yeah, it, it, it was it a fun like it went company. Well. It did. No, it did. It went well. But an e-commerce company is a different beast than yeah. digital. And it's it's a lot of us – and Mar a lot of entrepreneurs, we all do this. We suffer from like the grass is always greener, right? You know, maybe you have a subscription site and you're like, okay, I have a thousand members at $20 a month. That's 20 grand a month for most people like gravy. But then you look at someone else. Hey, I'm a high ticket coach. You know, I just sold one person for 20 grand. Like, oh man, maybe that's an easier business model, right? I could just do that because it's easier because well, I, I, I could run a lot of ads. All I need is one person and I make it back. And then, but the one with the coaching is like, oh man, I wish I had a subscription. So it's like, or 
I do digital products. Oh, I'd love to have an e-commerce company. But then you have the products, you have raw ingredients that keep going up. You got shipping costs. And all of a sudden they're like, all right, it's a 50 cent surcharge for gas. All of these little things eat into your margins. Then you have warehousing and inventory. And oh man, we the spirulina, there was a fire at the factory where they make the spirulina. That's going to be delayed two months. So now <sighs> we can't make any products, right? So it's like all of these things that are behind the scenes. Makes electrons people, attractive. It makes I missed. <laughs> I start, I mean, it's easier to sell a physical product because you don't need a ton of description, right? Like for me in the nutrition space, here's a bar. Here's greens, you add it to water. Here's a supplement you take. You don't need a ton of stuff. If you're selling a digital product, a $50 digital course, a $100 course, a $1,000 course subscription, here's what it is. Here's the benefit. Here's what you're going to get. Here's return. There's like a lot more that goes into it. However, so there's more volume in general with an e-com product, but there's a lot more margin with the digital. And we are so friggin' spoiled with digital. Like, I know a good thing when I'm on it. I'm stuck with it. <laughs> like I said People, to you, I, I was just sort of replying to your comment, something along, along the lines of you used to do it and then you stopped and now you're going to do it again. And, and I just said, look, you know, I just never stopped. Since 2009, Yeah, recurring income every month, like life wouldn't, wouldn't be what it is without that. That steady wall of certainty is, mm -hmm. makes you sleep better at night. It, it keeps your hormones in balance. It, I see the panic, the sheer terror of people when they can't get their offer converting or their one-time sale resource runs out. I fix Couldn't those imagine. problems. I even put a whole chapter in my book, you know, helping people around subscriptions and another chapter about be careful about the launch cycle style of business. Yeah. It's wear and tear. And gosh, I've seen some people come and go. But what I'm reading from your latest content is a simpler approach. And one yep. of the best episodes that I did recently was with Chris Evans and he was talking about scaling too much, going too big uh, with their company and, and then pulling back and, and uh, taking a more simple approach. This is a note that hits with my audience because mm -hmm. I've always been teaching this. You don't need to be a $10 million baller. You can have a great life on a couple of million dollars with a really high profit margin, a small team, keeping Absolutely. things simple. Yeah, yeah. It took me a while to get there. And, and maybe sometimes it's life lessons, right? And maybe when you're younger, like if you're younger and you're in your 20s and you're like your whole phone is loaded with Gary V and Grant Cardone and you want to take yeah, over the world. Yeah, and you don't have scale, kids scale, scale. and you can, yeah. you can work 20 hours a day. And right, right. But you're hungry you to older, prove yourself to the world. Yeah, but now it's like, <laughs> let me settle in. And I've had the business, like the business that was doing, you know, a million dollars a month, I make more profit with a company that could do 2 million a year because yeah. you don't have any bloat. And, and it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And everyone talks about these, the top line and everyone's showing like, you know, their, their awards and their plaques, you know, 19 comma club, but show me what you took home. You know, give me a business that can gross 500,000 and net 250 versus one that grossed 3 million and netted, you know, 100. <laughs> I reckon there's another level too. I feel like I'm at this level where I don't even show people my stuff. <laughs> oh, like revenue oh I, yeah I, you won't see I house never. tours from me or to you know shots of my assets and stuff i'm not a flashy uh, person no. I'm, I'm at the point now where i could just turn off the camera and never do any work for the rest of my life i'm the same age as you just a little bit older i don't look as young as you though <laughs> i'll have to work on that <laughs> yeah you do you i need good. some rewind bars um, but, and it was a profound thing because I came from a image driven industry. Mercedes Benz is arguably uh, a very strong image driven brand oh, yeah. and people were, it was all about fancy suits and pens and watches and shoes and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. When I got to the point where it didn't matter, that was like, Ooh, you know, like, and that's, I think that's the generational thing. We're talking about your twenties, your thirties, your forties, your fifties mm -hmm. in the fifties. I'm now pretty certain about where I'm at in life. I feel like I've had good experience. I'm able to make reasonable decisions and I'm still not that grumpy 60, 70, 80, 90 year old person, you know, in, intolerable with any type, type of variance. I'm still capable. Yeah. What an interesting ride it's been. And it's just so refreshing to hear this message. It's a healthy message because there's been too much focus on overwork, pushing boundaries, 
even there's sort of side swipes of this whole thing. You know, people say you got to get up at four in the morning, and that's sort of, I still think that's crazy. It just means uh, you go to bed early, right? Right. I, I, you know, and they make you feel like, oh man, you're you're lazy. You're not. You know, w- while you're watching Netflix, I'm grinding. I'm like, cool, man. Go, you do you. I'd say the other way Netflix. around, man. While you were grinding, I was ri- driving a riverboat with my kid. You know, right? Uh, looking at fish in the water, like. Like Gary says, you know, you do you. I think his messages have changed actually. It used to be a lot of hustle and grind and now it's a lot more about care and and stuff. Yeah. It's funny. I actually went to the – I took my kids to the – we're a big baseball fan. I took them to the Mets game uh, and we had like third row when he was front front row with his kids, you know. Like, you know, he shows, oh, I hustle, hustle, hustle. But at the end of the day, you know, people want to just – hopefully be with their family it's just kind of chill well some people uh, do depends on yeah, the family put, i suppose again, right i i don't judge others like yeah you everyone's got to find their own path i just what i'm trying to do is just speak to the people that this message resonates with like mm. yeah there are a lot of people talking about the flashy stuff and the cars and look at me in my private jet and scale 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 and that's cool but you don't have to and you shouldn't feel guilty and if you have a business that's making 300,000 a year and it's paying your bills and you're putting money away and everything's good. Great. Like I, I, I'll never forget this, James. I did a call with this woman years ago. She ran fitness boot camps and she had like three locations and she's like, you know, we're, I'm making, you know, 400,000. I'm netting. I have no kids. It's all money. It's all profit. I said, one out of 10, how are you feeling? How's life? She's like, oh my God, it's like a 10 out of 10. I said, great. She's like, but I got to scale. I said, why? She's like, well, I don't know. I heard one person say, if you're not scaling, if you're not growing, you're dying. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I buy that. I'm like, <laughs> you, you, like, enjoy the ride, but why put pressure on yourself to open more locations, do all this stuff when it's just going to be hard? It's, it might not be what you really want. Like, I, well, it's a this me, recurring money theme, not isn't thin. it? What's People that? build complexity until the point where they wish that it was back to soup. That Mexican they, fisherman yeah. story always gets to me. Oh yeah. It's like, where do you want to be in the scale of things? You know, yeah. you don't want to row the boat. It's good to have an engine, but I don't want a cannery listed on the stock exchange, you know, but mm-hmm. it's like somewhere there's got to be a nice balance. I feel like I've found that balance. And of course, a great part of what I'm doing is helping people know that they have a choice. You don't need to make $10 million to be significant. And it shouldn't really even matter what other people think. As long as you're happy. I think the scale of one to 10 was a really nice touch for you because it gets to the root of it. Most people are living someone else's goal. Yeah. I I ask that all the time. And and so the grass is greener. It's a classic one. I do this interesting thing and I I sort of call it benchmarking. But when I do happen to chance upon someone where I find out more about their scenario and it is actually appealing, I start to think about can I lean more that way or build some of those things into what I'm doing? I'm not going to be them. I wouldn't want to change places with anybody, right? Because you just never know. They could get flattened by a truck tomorrow. You certainly wouldn't change places with a 90-year-old billionaire because you're running out of runway, right? Right. So the value of life is immense. And I feel like, you know, potentially we're at the halfway point, would you say, roughly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I like to say we're kind of on the – we're on the back nine now. Maybe. I mean, each year we'll see a lot of development now, especially with uh, machine learning and and improvements in health. But we still have to be responsible for our human body to make sure we don't place it in harm's way. Yeah, I mean, I'm always. It's an interesting thing. Over the next few years, we might see an extension, providing we still have a planet to survive on. That it could start opening up. Certainly, as you've got kids, I've got kids. I think about it for my own kids, and we're seeing the life expectancy. Oh, here's something that totally blew me away. I visit the Philippines a lot and I noticed that the life expectancy there is about 12 years less than Australia for a man. Mm. Like that, that's just like, it's shocking. Wow, that's that, a lot. That is a lot. That's like you think about more than a decade difference in life yeah. expectancy just through condition of living and, and how harsh it can be in a developing nation with food and medicine and uh, pollution, et cetera. So I do think about these things more and more each year. Yeah. Um, health has become a massive priority. Your business model that you're describing that you're helping people with is um, it's healthy on people that recurring income takes pressure off. I think that's the, the best outcome of it. 
Yeah. Can you talk about what you're doing with your newsletter style stuff? And I'm also particularly interested in the survey you did regarding what kind of business model people are interested in because that yeah. had some astounding uh, sort of feedback. Yeah, it was interesting. To, just to give a little context, for years I was the membership guy and my stuff, my memberships were all about volume and bulk, right? Like you log in, here's your members dashboard, here's the video of the day, here's – and I was one, the first one to create like the Netflix for, I did the Netflix for, for entrepreneurs and then Brunson and Dice copied me, but that's a whole nother story. Oh, then, uh, and like 50,000 other people, eh? like yeah, I seriously and, here, I'm doing the Netflix closed, for. And it's nice to know where it came from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was the first one to do it for, for entrepreneurs because every membership site looked the same. And I'm like, well, I always look at other markets. I'm like, well, what's working other places? Well, Netflix. Okay. Let me model that. But a lot of them have closed down because it's just, it's not sustainable, but it's too much. Like yeah. it's, it's too much. People just can't consume that much. And there's so much good free content. Like we're at the point now you can't out content YouTube, right? There's 70,000 or 700,000 hours. I think there's hours of videos every single day added to YouTube. There's, and now with AI, forget it. You, you just can't out content everybody. So now it's, it's becoming a shifting to like more about helping people with the overwhelm, like being really streamlined, really on the nose, really straightforward advice. Um, so when I surveyed my list, I gave them some different choices. Now, there might be some bias because the people on my list might be more influenced by my messaging saying the membership sites, some of them can still work like the big old school bulky ones, but less and less, at least from what I'm hearing from people who run them and are closing them. Cause if it's doing well, you're probably not going to close it. Uh, I, I'm going to assume, right? Uh, Fair. So when I surveyed the top two answers, now I sound like a family feud, top two answers are on the board <laughs> uh, were like a, a streamline, you know, membership where it's like maybe once a week or maybe once a month, a piece of content or a newsletter, like those far and away, were the most desirable that people wanted. And a traditional membership was so far down the list with, you know, with all of the content uploads and the, the, the community and all the other things. I'm not saying they can't work. I'm not saying they won't work in the future. I think if memberships work, and you might have a, a differing well, uh, I've got, opinion I've on Well, I've definitely got some feedback to share with you on that. I yeah, mean, but I, I do think if, if they're going to work and you're going to build a community, you're going to have more content, it just has to be super specialized. Like it, it can't be... Hey, here's small business marketing, or here's social media marketing. Like it's got to be so so specific that people want to really dive in deep, and there's a strong pain, and and then it's really going to be about the community too, because people aren't going to want to leave, right? Because they're, they're so connected to it. But to do that, you have to have James Shramko type, like focus, and you can't take your eye off the ball. Like that has to be your thing. Right, you can't. Well, the eye off the ball thing. I think that for for me, that's. I wouldn't say I'm like a massively driven, focused person, but I would say that I have been good at keeping my finger on the pulse. The commitment to innovation is my secret. I'm very good at change. I can read patterns and trends, and I can adapt and adjust before it's too late. I see people leave it too late, and then they're they're sunk. So, having had a membership since 2009. It's been pretty much continuous. There was a change after the first four years where I dissolved the partnership and changed the brand name. That was when I went from having a standalone membership to, which started with zero content, to having tipping my information products in instead of selling them individually. I just put them all in one place. So I guess that was like the 2013 version of a Netflix. Since then, like it was 10 years ago, I've continuously run the same platform up until about uh, the middle of last year when I switched off hundreds of thousands of posts, gigabytes, terabytes worth of trainings. I did like 90 one-hour trainings in a row every month, wow. right, just 90. <laughs> I just like I, I can stick it out. I definitely have stick to yeah. And I started a brand-new platform and I started with the minimum possible navigation, the minimum possible features, and I'm mm -hmm. pruning it to this day. But really I just wanted two things. Um, well, there's three things really. Where I've found the, the maximum value for members now is having the least amount of things that people 
could consume to get the, the best possible result. There's even a name for this, right? It's called zone of proximal development. But if you look up the definition of that, it's the, the zone of proximal development. It's the space between what a learner can do without someone and what a learner can do with adult guidance in collaboration with more capable peers. So what I wanted is I wanted a playbook. I want to add playbooks. So my content that I add now, instead of an hour-long webinar on a specific topic, I'm like, that might be the, the coal mine, but what's the diamond here? The diamond is one page of the outline of what it is, how it works or why it works, like why, and then the right. steps, do this. And it's yeah, one I page and I, I publish, at the moment I'm publishing about one a week and they're coming from various places. They're coming from my old trainings. They're coming from what's working in my business last week. They're coming from what I've seen a client do particularly well. They're coming from my life sheet, which is pretty much my second brain, my, my catch, catch of every, everything important. And interestingly, your survey results are something that circulated into my own sort of conversation for that week, just confirming mm. what I already know. People don't want stuff. They want an outcome. No. And yeah. they might come for the outcome and still build that community. So there's always the three Cs, right? You have some content. But that's really the very small part. You have some coaching, a very big part for me. And if you I have say a week, community, I'm going to yep. crush you because I came up with the three C's and everyone uses it. No one, no one gives me credit for that anymore. But yes. <laughs> well, I didn't know it came from you. Sim I did. As that. It did. And everyone keeps still and no one ever gave me credit. But that's okay. Well, let's say today, I you will know, credit Ryan Lee with the three C's. Yes, please. Today, like I literally the first the, time I I've found that. out where that came from. I don't know who to credit. That and I'm big me. on credit. You know, anyone who listens to this knows I always credit the source if I know it. Yeah. I think retention, did you invent this one, the, the combination of um, relationship and results? I did not come up with that. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad one. <laughs> I have not used that phraseology. Some of the lessons I've learned have taken me decades to, to come up with, or at least a decade, like where I had too many people locking me in on too low a rate for too long, like when I had seven or eight year long clients you know, this three-month retention number that gets touted is ridiculous. For me, it's about uh, five years. And uh, so I'd, I've had to reset my rates. I reset my brand. I reset my membership. So I went from company to personal. I, I went from that. complex to simple. Mm -hmm. And I've reset my rates to, to narrow in on the package. The main thing I want is that mid-tier. I'm not so interested in the low tier. Low mm. tier is the, the, the volume game. It might work in a sports market or a fitness market or a crafty market or a music market. But I found in the business market, better off to go on the mid to high tier because yeah. you get so much better result for so, so less people. And you can also, of course, you can afford to create a book or give it away or whatever. You can use some budget to find a, a client if you need to do some acceleration of that marketing. Yeah. You need a benchmark traffic source. I think YouTube is still like that. That's that's a winner. I yeah, noticed that, today, YouTube have a podcast channel. Podcast. Yep. Like that. That's that's brand new. Lucky yeah, for me because I can now create a back playlist of my podcast episodes. Yeah. So I'm excited for I'm, that. Yeah, I'm. I'm really. I'm very, very uh, bullish on YouTube. In fact, that's. Going forward, that is going to be like my number one focus by far. Like front end of YouTube, my, email is your sales engine. Everything is going to go on YouTube um, and email, right? You're very interested in email. Yeah, email's always been my thing. It's, a, it's um, still I mean, email, right? It's, it's yeah, the way to go. I mean, it's still where you sell. Um, it's still where you convert people into your membership site. Uh, but I'm with you on everything you said in terms of simplicity. I mean, my membership right now, quote unquote membership, it's an, an email. That's, I don't even have a user. I don't have logins or passwords or dashboards. Yeah. Like you're on my active campaign list. If you're a paid member, I, I use Sam cart. And if you cancel, you're off the list. And if you're on the list, I'm going to send you, here's a zoom link, or here's a recording. He, I uploaded it on, here's the Vimeo link to download, or here's the Google doc. That's it. It's about as simple as you can go. Z James, zero complaints about, Oh, there's no, you, you know, logins, no issues with back. Like it is the most simple business imaginable and people like it. Cause just like you, it's like, yeah, it's low they, friction. They get their thing. You got to make no, it easy to use and more useful. I, I like and that. And, can, um, yeah. Same. Even though I use a platform, like it does the functions of what you're probably getting from Sam cart. I use click and it does have an app, which is really good for my members because some yeah. of the things I guess it 
with the private coaching, I'm mm-hmm. not going to private coach back and forth with email. So they can do it in the app in the chat. What app? And what is it called? Click? Yeah, K-L-E-Q. It does. The, it basically, if you took K-L-E-Q? K-L-E-Q.com, if you took okay. click funnels for campaigns, like you just click a button for a book campaign, for example, you take Sam Card or Thrive Card as the cart, put it together in a love child or and schools forum chat things, yeah. you've got click. And it's been around for like right. 10 years. It's solid. Okay. And so uh, it's really, really easy to have someone join. But I actually put a lot of my campaigns on the public side with no login, no friction, and then mm. – when they join, then they can get into the the app, and that's how yeah. I do the private coaching. And I put a link for the weekly group calls and stuff. But I agree, keep it down. If you're doing a Frankenstein with sixteen different glued together bits and pieces, that's old. That's forget it. You're done. It, yeah, you're and it, it drives me crazy when I get so frustrated because I want people to succeed, just like you. We're it's yes, we want to make money, but you want to help people and you want to see people win. And I'm in one group. And it's for membership site or people want to start membership sites. And all they do is fixate on platforms. Tech, like, tech, what platform? tech, 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 tech. Crazy. And, and they don't have a list. They don't know what the heck they're going to market to or anything. They're like, well, I want one that can give people points and it makes them an automatic affiliate. And blah, blah. I'm like, no one is going to be your affiliate. Okay. Yeah. Like they're not <laughs> going to be an affiliate for $9.95 a month crafting like they're not like that's not your marketing show and it's yeah and people are like yeah go for it and it's just you see people spend that's oh, crazy months or years and it's so it's like heartbreaking and you don't want to sound like mr negative and you know and i try to help people but man it's tough to see especially when people do want recurring revenue because it's who doesn't but they're so misled and they're so distracted by the tech stuff and that's why i'm like just start with an email like just start there start an email and PayPal, right? Or, or even something like Gumroad, like just something mm-hmm. really, really simple, just, just proof of concept. And you can get your 10 members and you could flip them onto another platform if you had to. Like, it's not that big of a deal. You're not locked into one thing forever. I mean, look at you. You had terabytes of information, you know, all of that just stuff. And you were it. able to. But no, nobody's complained. Where's all my stuff, right? Not, like they, and I said, hey, if you James, want, I I said, if you your... want something, if there's yeah. something you really want, you let me know. But my goal is, and I told them, I'm going into my old membership. Like It's like an abandoned supermarket. I'm going to find the things that are really useful and I'm just bringing them back as a one-page playbook. No one's complaining right. about that. They love yeah, the I mean, playbooks. It, Right. They're saying, hey, where's my Excite bot, you know, <laughs> training or how to make money on it's Craigslist? It's all crap, isn't it? So much crap. Uh, and yeah. I have the same issue with um, like commoditized Facebook groups and stuff. It's just all noise and, and, uh, and difficult. And yeah. so I like what you're doing. You've created your own email. It's like I've created my own place where I can have that communication without the blind leading the blind effect that I call it, where a lot of the the big experts, they sell a high ticket thing, they create a group around it, they never show up and then they let people just give each other crap answers and then they repeat the whole cycle in the next six months or a year later. And it's like, please yeah. stop doing that. I know. <laughs> With the, ma- the masterminds and, you're, oh, it's 25 oh, So I've done a couple of things. These are some major innovations for me that I think would be useful. One is I only sell monthly subscriptions. I don't do annual anymore mm, because I'm performance-based. I want to get a result for people and they shouldn't stick around if they can't get a result. And I have no service debt beyond a month. I could uh, turn off my membership in a month from now and there's no issue. That's nice. People do stay, which is great. The second thing is... There's a couple of people who I'm such a good fit for that I should partner with and I do performance-based deals with them where I get paid on performance only. There's no retainer, no downside really. It's like I get a quasi-ownership of their business in terms of a percentage of revenue as my fee mm-hmm. above where they could get to by themselves. Yeah. And that's been very interesting from a Pareto principle. You know, like eight of them make more than – all my other members in all my other platforms and yeah, you, the you, top one or two make the most, uh, which is phenomenal. Yeah. You get, you get a lot of ups, upside. I've had the opportunity. I actually did that once or twice. You'd be in, in a great position to do it because you're so oh skilled. My God. If I, and if I would have done it with some of my clients now who have businesses doing, you know, 20, 30 million a year, forget, but well, that's why I do it. Cause I said yeah. to, to Jay Abraham, if you could go back in time, what would you do different? He said, well, instead of selling 20 or $30,000 workshops, I should have done more rev share deals. 
And that was about six and a half years ago. So I started then. That's yeah, why I was it, able to turn off one to one. I've retired my one to one training. Uh, yeah, that's why I only need feel, two products. Yeah, but do you still feel like, I guess for me, it's money's never been the number one thing. I'm a freedom first guy and I cannot work for anyone. I can't. Uh, I'm unhirable. And the minute I have that relationship, I, I, the second I feel like I have to answer to someone where they're like texting me and like, hey, circling back, what do you think? <laughs> and I feel like I'm. I don't have I'm any out. of that. It's not, it's I'm not out. how I, I don't care. You could say, like, I'll pay a million bucks a year. You work for, I will not do it any amount. Um, hundred million, I wouldn't do it. I, I just won't. Uh, I don't need the money. And I, I just. Well, I'm like, I'm like you. I like freedom. But the way that our partnerships work, it's like, it's basically like we where we share the business together, but without all the downsides of a 50 50 thing. It's their business, no doubt about it. It's their major upside. I just take a small percentage for my contribution, but we make, um, you know, we just collaborate. I like the collaboration. Back to Def Leppard, it's like if you're a really good uh, guitarist or bass player and you could find an amazing drummer and you want to make a song together, that's what it's like for me. Yeah. You're just filling in those drum beats, baby. Uh, That's it. It's like, you know, find someone you want to collaborate with. I've got some people who I can collaborate with. We can create content together. We can talk about uh, ways that we can make the product great. I am really interested in making good product. I'd say the creative side has come out more as I've had more freedom where I can, where I'm getting more interested in making good stuff, you know, like back to old sort of, you know, building things with Lego or just art having good art is is important to me and learning about design and making things that people get great results from is exciting if you if you were taking on new people right now i like the way this is kind of turned now i'm interviewing you for the james (laughs) podcast. if you were taking on people right now do they have to already have a baseline because that would be if i would do this i need to have someone already up and running like already generating revenue i i can't get you from because you don't know if they're actually ever going to do anything. Yeah, well, right? that's so I'd many- say that's like you uh, you can't steer a parked car, right? A parked car is risky because you don't even know if it has an engine. But a car yeah. doing 60 miles an hour on the freeway, you know a lot about it already. It ha- definitely has an engine and it can, can drive. Now it's easy to change gears and hit the gas. So now it's, there's less risk. Does it have gas in the tank? You know, will the wheels fall off at, at 100 miles an hour? I guess we don't know that, but we can, yeah. we could have a look at the car and make an assessment. To answer your you question, can't get away from the, you can't get away from the car analogies, can you? There are, so the I car can. industries always bring you back, James. There are, there are some filters that I would look for. What I would like to see is they're self-motivated. There's already a fire. I'd rather control a fire than start a fire. I also want to promote their product or, or service to my audience and for sales to be made. I want to know that my audience are interested in their thing because that makes it very easy for me because my main job then is to build an audience Mm-hmm. and to build trust with my audience and to make uh, solid recommendations. I need to trust them. Like they have to be someone I could know that they're going to pay me and that, yeah. that uh, we have a great relationship that we get on well with. And, you know, they have to have a good for humans type product or service, which of course I would never promote if they didn't. And ideally they're going to have a team. This is the one thing that's been the Achilles heel like they someone's doing quite well, but they're too small and I give them great ideas or whatever and then they can't implement it or scale it because yeah. I'm going to blow them up. Basically, I'm going to double them or triple them or quadruple them and I don't, I don't want them to lose that uh, momentum. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Which is luckily, I, like I'm really good at helping to build a team, but it's so much better if they've got one or two. I think there's two partners that I would have had if they'd had a team, but they're solo operators and they'll basically run out of capacity in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you get some of the big things. All right. Now I'm interviewing you again. All right, James, <laughs> screw it. I, I, who cares what I think about who cares what I've done? Um, I'm curious. You mentioned earlier, I forget what you called it. I call it mid premium. You had a different name for the pricing. Well, same, same. Yeah. Mid, mid ticket. Mid, mid, yeah. Yeah. What do you consider? Like what's your definition of low versus mid? So I would say low is like, well, obviously there's the high volume, really low, low ticket, sub $100. I think the mid ticket is sort of more the one to 3000 and high tickets probably in the five, 10 up per okay. month. Yeah. What about you? I have you? such a different definition. Yeah, I, tell me. Because I you consider, come from a fitness market, I imagine there's I know. very different numbers. When I hear low, 
I'm like 10 bucks a month. Yeah. 20, even 30. When I start looking, I look at mid between like 30 bucks to like a hundred, a hundred, yeah. you know, the kind of, the kind where you would join it. You wouldn't really think too much about it. Like you don't necessarily have to ask permission from your spouse or <laughs> business partner, yeah. you know, a $30 a month. You probably, most people, I'm not judging, you know, again, some $30 a month, they feel a lot. Well, it's but, all, uh, context is, is critical. Yeah. Like I've, I even have to translate. If you're talking to someone from middle America, then, you know, they can actually exist on $150,000 a year. If you're talking yeah. to someone in Sydney, London, or Paris, that's not a possibility. Yeah. Well, where I live in New Canaan, Connecticut, forget it. Yeah. Um, right. It, it's, it's insane. So, yeah, it's, well, that's interesting. And I mean, most of the stuff that I'm dealing with is, is more of a business market, you know, and, and a return on investment type discussion mm -hmm. rather than hobby or passion. Yeah. So, we were saying before about uh, like marketing and channels, and I was saying, you know, YouTube. So here's what's interesting. I'm really, the past, I'd say, month, behind the scenes, I've been studying it like crazy. I've been watching everyone, taking notes, asking my friends who are doing well. Because I have one, one buddy, I, I can't say his name. Years ago, he said, you know, Ryan, I turned on YouTube ads because he has a popular YouTube channel in like personal development. He said, I turned on ads and I was making 30 grand a month. And just... In addition to all like the clients he gets and stuff, I said, wow. And I texted him about two weeks ago. I said, you know, I'm, re I'm really studying YouTube and it's fascinating because my, my son was home sick from school. I said, you know what, Jake? Just watch TV. I don't, just lay down. You don't feel well. All day, James, he watched YouTube mm -hmm. on TV. Yep. All day. Like and stupid. if he was much younger, he'd be on TikTok all day just scrolling yeah. and just like this. Yeah, and he does some TikTok stuff. But, but it was like he watches these guys like doing like stupid basketball shots and I'm going to shave a – my butt backwards, like idiots. They're like, "Hey, I'm I'm 20. Here's my mansion." And I'm like, "What is going on?" So my I I text my buddy. I said, "Man, when you told me about the 30 grand a month, just turning on the ads, said, that was that really made me think." This was like three years ago. He said, "Ryan, it's 250 a month now." I said, what? 250 thousand dollars a month just an mm -hmm. AdSense revenue from YouTube ads, yep. like. And this is just growing. Like if you're looking at all the habits of everyone. I coach plenty of people to make 30, 40, 50 grand a month from YouTube. As just and it's not, and, and depending source. on the space you're in, like if you're in the business and marketing space, you're talking like $20, sometimes even $30 RPMs, you know, revenue per thousand. So you put a video out there that gets 100,000 views, you know, 100 times 30. It's like three grand. Well, if you ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up now, they'll say YouTuber. It, I've definitely watched it. I've, I have um, plenty of people in the YouTube, either content creator space or the advertising space. It's just all roads lead to YouTubers being a, a King Kong and partly because the content stays up and it keeps performing for a long time, which is something you and I both look for. It's not Back that catalog. one shot. Exactly. It's not a newsfeed platform like Twitter or mm -hmm. um, Instagram uh, or LinkedIn, et cetera. So I, I feel like yeah. YouTube, definitely, I've been waiting to put my, I've got my podcast, which is convenient now that they're going to have podcasts. I feel like that's an automatic win. But yeah. the ad revenue can definitely, I've seen people with 100,000, 300,000 or 500,000 subscribers are making tens of thousands a month as chump change to the side of whatever they're doing for the actual yeah. reason they got onto the thing in the first place. Yeah, I and it, those numbers are just going to keep growing, you yeah. know, as more advertisers get on and more, as more eyeballs on it. And, and you just have to put out good stuff. Like yeah. you, you really have that's to. That's it. The quality of production is going to be critical. Right. And thumbnails. Well, that's like why that's Mr. Beast, he'll, he won't even publish a video unless they get the thumbnail. They spend days and thousands making the thumbnail and then they create the video after that. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm learning as I'm really digging in and seeing and reverse engineering. It's like coming up with the thumbnail it's and the It's the headline. idea, the thumbnail, and then the edit. And they actually just go through the dictionary looking for random things to make, to get ideas for stuff, right? But, but what you're going to see, but it, what's crazy, James, is we could tell people this. And that's what I'm going to be doing over the next year. Like I'm going to, my goal is to like just really put myself back. I, have, I got nothing And where to do, do we do this? Where at ryanlee.com? Yeah, ryanlee.com. Yeah. Um, Simple as that. Yeah. Sign up for my newsletter, but I'm going to post the videos on there too. And I'm just going to start playing, but I'll do it. I'm going to challenge you to do this more, James, too. And then, but we can give people advice. And what's crazy is 
they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they'll still like take the lazy way out or do like they'll shortcut it. And you'll say you have well, to do it. Or they'll complicate it. I actually give, I actually give yeah. people a shortcut. I had a guy join my membership last month. Last week I told him what to do. This week he's already got results and he's clarifying the next step. And it just, to the other people around, it just sound, sounds too simple and too easy. But it actually is in anything. Well, all it took me was a, a decade or so and seeing thousands of people try stuff to know exactly what to do and he's just yeah. doing it and it's he's just straight out of the gate. Like people want to make it harder sometimes because they're used to this whole thing about hard work and difficulties mm-hmm. and they're expecting things to go wrong. Like imagine if it was, if there were some legitimate simple ways to go and I'm saying that the big snapshot from this episode would be Find a way to get recurring income. It's worthwhile. Keep it as simple as absolutely possible. Yep. YouTube is a strong front-end driver and potentially a good income earner. And email is still solid as a rock. Is that oh, all like fair? That. Yeah, yeah. Email, no matter what you do, whatever social platform you pick, Build an TikTok, email Instagram, get them on your list. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's what you control. That's the simple and- advice. That's, that's the one people ignore. <laughs> Or they get some people on their list, right? Or they just they focus on the amount of followers they have, like on Instagram. Yeah, vanity metrics. Right, and and you could post a, uh, something on Instagram and get seven likes. So who cares? What does that do? You get them on your list. But here's a crazy thing, James. Email your list, guys. But email them good stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. when you say, I'll say, oh, tell me about your list. Well, I have two thousand people. When was the last time you emailed them? Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> I, why? I've been busy. What's more important? But that is, I said, that is the very first you, thing you, you should do. You're doing daily? I haven't checked. But da- I call it daily-ish. You've got to be emailing and, once a week, right? Absolutely. If you oh, want to keep getting minimum, delivered. I always say minimum once, once a week, week. Minimum once a week. But I usually do, I'll do like two, three days in a row. Then I'll take a day. I used to do it every day, seven days a week. Yeah. But I don't always feel like it. You There's some days I wake same, up. Same me. Like, that's like I, I put a playbook most weeks uh, yeah we we I usually see. publish two podcasts a week sometimes one but mostly two and the best thing about my community this is really the, the important thing the thing i like about my community is i can go into it when i want i can like i don't i don't take any scheduled calls four days a week like i've been doing that for seven or eight years yeah. but i can still log on to my community via my app and answer a post at eight thirty at night or nine in the morning or whenever i feel like it Go and swim with my daughter, have some lunch, check in on my community. It's not it's not a set in the schedule thing that forces me to be in a job like scenario. And that's why I've been able to do it for so long, because it's not too wear and tear. Yeah. And you know what? It's your business and you set the rules, right? And yep. and that's it. And if you want to have a community and you want to answer them at noon, do it. If you have and if you don't have a community and you don't want to have one, don't have one, right? If you want to answer it at one in the morning or three, it's your business, but you, you've got to set expectations from the beginning. Don't say I'm going to yeah, answer so. it every hour and then not. Like, <laughs> so a lot of this is just common sense stuff. And I've always had the filter of just treat people how you want to be treated. That's it. That's the rule. Like, what would you want to have happen? Like, just treat them really well. Yeah. Simplicity, getting them on the email list and just serving them with really consistent awesomeness and you're enjoying a business more now than you have for a while oh my god i finally have like joy in my it's man it's been so many like i had really high peaks at the very beginning and really really big lows now i know who i am i know where i want to show up in the world i know how i want to show up i'm i'm securing myself but the most important thing, and, and I'm sure you feel the same way, is that like my family's good, you know, my wife, my four kids, they're happy, they're healthy, they're well adjusted. My kids are doing well in school, they're doing well in sports, they have friends. Like all of that is doing well, everything else is gravy, you know? Like, all right, so I did a, a product that didn't do as well. Okay. Get you brush yourself back off because that's the other thing you got to have resilience, right? You get you you're going you will, to have you'll get punched in the face occasionally. Like last week was fun for me. I I snapped a brand new surfboard, and then the bank that I have in America got shut down. Like just things are going to oh. no matter how hard you work to to have things set up well, there will be little setbacks. 
and a brand new car that I bought had a had a vibration at 100 kilometers an hour. I just put the car thing back in there. I thought you might want to hear about cars again. Um, I did, and, so and I, did, I, I you need know, you to convert kilometers to miles per hour because well, we don't know what the hell that means. Well, kilometers an hour is about sixty miles an hour. Yeah, and fifty, eighty, that sort of stuff. So, <laughs> um, you know, you're going to get setbacks. Things things are going to happen, and that's why yeah. it's important to be able to adapt to change. And yep. Seems like you found your true north. I'm loving your emails. I love your website. I love all the, your uh, social posts about the 80s. It's been fun <laughs> watching your journey from the first time I met you in 2008 to now. And I'm so excited that you've uh, accepted the offer to come and have a chat on this podcast and also to give us the source of the three C's. I, I've learned something uh, particularly useful that I can incorporate yes. into my membership book that's coming out at some point. Thank you, Ryan, so uh, well, much. Well, I, I appreciate it. And just say, like, if you call the book The Three C's According to Ryan Lee <laughs> featuring James Schramko, then then I'm good. Uh, Ryan no, Lee's I, secret I, three C formula revealed. Yes. <laughs> I, I no, but I really uh, appreciate you having me on, even though it is episode number seven thousand eight hundred and twenty nine. Um, and I know I am going to be launching on YouTube. I'm going to be launching my new show. Right now, it's tentatively titled Ryan Lee TV because I got to kind of make it a little bit fun and different, and play off the MTV thing. And but uh, I'm going to have you on as one of my. You're going to make it one of my top thousand guests. Awesome. I don't know where you're going to fall. That's it. I've, I'm winning life. You'll be top thousand along with our mutual friend Kevin Rogers. Uh, he'll make Kevin. top thousand as well. Well, uh, I mean that that's a story in itself. I actually uh, helped him create Copy Chief. That was I know that was the uh, that's one of the best membership uh, case studies that I can cite. And and it's it's so good to see them prosper and and succeed for such a long time. God, that guy's funny though. He's a lot funnier he is, than me. You should definitely have him. First, don't put me straight after him. I'm going to be such a flatliner after him. Yeah, he he's one of my close friends. We've known him for. I actually the first time he spoke at a marketing event was at one, at one of my stages. Um, oh. He's such a good guy, and uh, that's why there's. I know a lot of marketers, you know, kind of get a bad name, you know, oh gurus and a hole. But there there were some really good men and women in the oh, some incredible ones, it's like to, our mutual friend Carrie Wilkinson. Carrie's Wilkinson. great. Yeah. yeah, some some really great people who care who want to do good things unfortunately some of the bad ones are very vocal and make everyone else look bad i know you're one of the good guys i i wouldn't come on if i didn't think you were like i know you are uh and we've known each other for a long time and i really i know i know i was teasing you with a thousand people but i do know you are very protective of who you bring into your world 100 oh, and you have to, yeah you have to trust them uh so i i really am honored that that i was on here and hopefully people got at least one or two big ahas. So Massive. I know I did. I mean, It'd be fair to say there's, it's unlikely I would have been pursuing the membership model so much unless I'd seen examples of it working before, which you were responsible for in the industry. So for your foundational yeah. work, I'm really appreciative. And to be able to bring some history back into the new generation, is, it's really exciting. I, I'm pretty sure we'll get some great comments about this. If you listen to this episode, 1002 if you uh, join <laughs> Ryan's list or email just reply back to him when he when he asks you to tell you about him about yourself tell him you heard about him on Shramko's podcast I'm sure you'll get a big smile from that yes thanks Ryan and then I will delete you and block you um <laughs> but no I thank you James and thank you all for listening and watching and uh I look forward to seeing you continue this journey and innovating as always so Let's thank you my goes. man thank you this is James Schramko.